All right, God bless you, family. Well, there's, there's a lot of troubling stuff going on with Israel having been attacked by, by terrorists. And there's, there's protests in New York City, people standing up for these terrorists who invaded Israel, people backing Israel. We got U.S. warships positioned in the Middle East to offer assistance to Israel. You know, we got a lot of nations putting up the color of Israel, their flag in support. You know, the way I see with the U.S. Um, sending warships and, and, and aid and money, I mean, this is just, this is great positioning for a greater war. Um, uh, here's another thing. You know, Israel, the way it got attacked, I think there's... There's infiltration um, from the inside, and there's no way I think they should have not been able to see you know, people approaching, you know, the enemy approaching the, the fences, the borders, and and some of those terrorists who've been captured, they're being interrogated. They've said, you know, we breached it in like 15 different places. We had like two hours before anyone was even messing with them. You know, America's under attack. Our borders are wide open. And um, we know that devils will creep in. Paul talks about this in in Scripture about the church. He says, I know when I leave here, ravenous wolves will come in, not sparing the flock. So there's always infiltration in everything. The FBI has been compromised. You know, police departments. God bless our police. They're, they're mostly good ones, but I'm sure there's, there's snakes who come in. So there's all these things going on. And I think it's just these more free nations, America, Israel, they need to be brought down low. They need to be um, just part of the worldwide clamoring. We need a leader, and that'll be perfect. The church is caught away. The Antichrist figure is uh, then revealed, and the people will love him because they'll be primed for needing that help. <laughs> There's some articles talking about Israel would, would be down to use some tactical nukes. Um, but there's so many, what is it, a couple couple million, most and half of that men, uh, Muslims in that Gaza, Gaza Strip area. And if they were to come, they would overrun and over flood on Israel. And that'd be a major problem. So they could use, uh, Israel was talking, they could use some tactical nukes. And, uh, so further escalations. I mean, the good news is Jesus told us in Matthew 24, um, the longest answer to any question in Scripture, Teacher, what will be the signs of the end of the age and your coming? Jesus says, See that you're not deceived. So deception, check. Wars and rumors of war, check, check. Earthquakes in diverse places. I've got two earthquake apps on my cell phone. There's things popping every day, everywhere. Mexico, Colombia, Turkey again, there's just a trifecta of three more earthquakes in Turkey, a couple other places that were six point and bigger, um, Afghanistan, I'm sorry, Turkey, yeah, I forget what they were, Czech, um, nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, that is turmoil within countries, I mean, that's the good news, the Lord gives us these head uh, heads up to things. So when things happen, we're not completely like, what? We're just more like we're troubled because it's terrible, but a sin is a problem, right? This is a sin issue. And demonic. I mean, this is a wickedness issue. <clears throat> these demons behind these people who, who would do such things, going to Israel and, and, and kill civilians. I mean, these are war crimes, obviously, but they don't play by the rules. I mean, all bets are off. These are the these are the last days. Um, how do we deal 
with this heaviness and this heartache. All right, guys. 1 Corinthians 3. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither are you now able to bear. For ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envying, strife, and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? For while one says, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Paulus, are you not carnal? So, some scripture reading today from my service today. Is not the time to be babes in Christ. Any of you who follow on Jesus, uh, we have to get off the milk, start eating hard food. Uh, there's a lot of moving pieces. There's a there's a, there's more coming. We know from God's prophetic word, uh, Ezekiel 37, 38, 39. We know there's going to be that great horde from the north come upon Israel, Russia, Turkey, Iran, are mentioned in the text, um, and there'll be some uh, northern African nations that will come against us as well, Israel as well, from the south. Uh, we know Israel will be all alone, and the Lord will intervene, and, and he will protect Israel, and that will be a cool thing. We may see that. We may be caught away. We may not see that, but that will happen. Um, Israel will do some strikes. Uh, Damascus, Syria will be destroyed. You know, at first I always thought it would be a preemptive attack by Israel onto these weapons movements into Damascus, Syria, to come against Israel, and they would accidentally hit a nuke, and that's what would do it. But now if Israel backed up into a corner like they are, if they use a tactical nuke, uh, that's how Damascus can be wiped out. And I can see that now with this stuff happening. One way or another, uh, Isaiah 17, 1, Damascus will be destroyed overnight. The evening it is, and behold, in the morning it is not. It shall become a ruinous heap. It shall be uninhabitable. We know that's coming. So in conjunction with 1 Corinthians 3, now is the time to uh, not be carnal, not to be fleshly, but to be spiritual. You know, Pastor Steve had mentioned we are no longer human. Um, rather, we are no longer just human, right? We are human. We are yoked to this flesh. But if you're born again, you are spiritual. And he made the point, if you're spiritual, it means you have the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Although I would also say, you know, you can be spiritual and have evil spirits. But in this context, um, yeah, if you're spiritual, we know that the spirit fights against the flesh. Um, there is this flesh. We need to subject our flesh. We need to feed into our spirit, Right? walk in righteousness and obedience in relationship with Jesus. Um, in the previous chapter of 1 Corinthians 2, we know that spiritual things are discerned by the Spirit, by the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> so it's a deep concept that we're not just human anymore. Let's not walk in the flesh. We're so much more than that. We're going to need the mind of Christ, which uh, 1 Corinthians 2 tells us we have. Who has known the mind of God, but we do have um, the mind of Christ. Uh, 2, 16, for who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him. But we have the mind of Christ. We've got a lot. Let's not leave anything on the table. There's going to be more stuff coming to us. We need to be mentally, emotionally, spiritually strong. We need to lead our households well. We need to be in prayer for the body of Christ across the face of the earth. I've been praying so much. I pray for Israel every day, mostly for the conversion of those who are lost, but for believers as well. Believers in every nation across this country, every, this world, everywhere where there is people. Why do we act fleshly, carnally? Um, Pat, the pastor mentioned, you know, it's because we settle a lot. You know, we settle... C.S. Lewis alluded to, we're too easily pleased. You know, we settle for eating mud pies instead of knowing that there's a banquet, there's a feast, there's something greater. Another thing I wanted to mention, 
in the service today talking about just not being carnal but being spiritual and again in the context especially in these last days when we need discernment we need holy spirit power uh, it's like a sailboat we can't white knuckle something we can't you know will something to be and especially when we need massive help from the lord to uh be protected from the deception to discern things properly it's like a sailboat so you go from a, a boat of rowing to having the mechanism of the sail and all you need to do is up that sail and catch the wind the holy spirit and that is the driving force the power that will get you moving better more efficiently we need to do that family we need to you know work smarter not harder and it's not even us who do it we need to yield to the holy spirit so that he can do it better with more power so our witness can be stronger so our interactions with people might bear fruit might save souls win people unto jesus because what we saw in israel yesterday saturday october 7 2023 was a terrible thing and that, that's a foretaste of what's coming in the tribulation it's going to be slaughter we're talking a third of humanity will be killed at different segments during the different judgments of the wrath of god which those of us who have trusted on jesus thank god we won't have to experience the second of jesus took that wrath we don't have to we don't need to suffer anymore christ did it it is finished Let's get off the milk. Let's get on that hard food. Let's get our repetitions in scripture, in prayer. If anybody's watching this and you don't know Jesus and you're, you're getting a little freaked out at what you're seeing, you're, you're seeing the turmoil. The war bells are ringing. We're talking world war. I believe we're already in World War Three, but we're going to come to that main type of event that's really a signature of its own. And we're going to understand if there was much of human history left, we would look back and be like, you know, World War III started earlier, but it really got everybody pulled in at what Israel using some nukes and what someone else trying to use some nukes. I mean, it's going to be something. <clears throat> but what I'm saying is let's, let's do our part, which is compared to what the Holy Spirit does. It is not much, but we need to take those steps. We need to approach situations in our days, in our life. But it's the Holy Spirit who's going to do it book of revelation where that philadelphia church we don't have a lot of power and that's good that's humbling that we can't do much but we can show up to everything and it's the the lord who sets open the door that no man can shut he paves our path he will help us with anything with everything so this is my my spirit on the thing also i'll close with you know, revelation also talks about to the church of here which church it is the lukewarm church laodicea don't be lukewarm i wish that you were hot or cold since you are not i will spew you out of my mouth guys believers brethren brothers and sisters we gotta stop being lukewarm we gotta draw a line in the sand and say today things change we need to burn the bridge to the flesh to the world to you know to sin so that we may sin less so that we don't have another option to go back to the, the world to the flesh a dog back to its vomit let's be done with that let's finish strong let's be one of those two churches of revelation that the lord doesn't have corrective language when we get translated and go to glory we're going praise god that's victory there but let us please the lord and let us receive the, the crowns he has for us. Let us make him proud where he's like, thank you, you did it. Those things I had prepared for you since the beginning, since before the foundations of the earth, you walked in them. We want King Jesus to, you know, um, for us to make his joy full by, by walking in partnership with him. So that's all I wanted to say. First Corinthians 3, let us labor with the Lord. Let us, let us grow. Let us no longer be babes. Let us be mature in our witness so we can lead and bless and encourage others around us, okay? We can do it. Who else is going to do it? And the Lord will use his people, me, you watching us. He will use us to be a light of the world, the salt of the earth. Salt is used to decay, to um, slow down decay. That's what we're doing because when we are removed, then the decay comes the restrainer is removed and the man of sin is revealed and then it begins and there's the seven year 
peace deal. It's going to be looking good for inhabitants of the earth. But then it's nothing but bad news one after another, like we've been seeing the last few years, but on a scale unimaginable. You know, we, we've read in scripture a lot of times regarding God's people in Israel. A lot of times terrible things have been happened. Have happened. You know, the women being raped, children dashed against stones, being carried off into Assyria, into Babylon, into captivity. Everyone killed. The temple being destroyed. You know, what happened in Israel the other day is akin to all that stuff. God bless God's people in Israel. There's wickedness on all four corners of this earth and in between. <clears throat> These things happen. They could happen across the face of the earth from where you are. They could happen in your backyard. They could encroach on us. Let us walk in the Spirit so that the Holy Spirit can guide us, can give us victories, can give us discernment, can give us miraculous healing and instruction and direction and protection. Let us be wise. Our people perish for lack of wisdom. Fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Let us not perish unnecessarily. The Lord could sniff out, snuff out a man's life too by playing with sin. So let us just keep striving. I encourage you guys to do that. This is just such a sobering moment. This news of yesterday with Israel being attacked. So it's it's timely that what I heard preached today, the the First Corinthians three. Get off the milk. We got to um, walk in partnership with the Holy Spirit. Put that sail up. Quit rowing. Quit doing stuff of our own. Thinking this is kind of good. I've been doing pretty good. I'm a good rower. I'm building up my muscles. It's like let's just stop that. Let's put up the sail. Let the Holy Spirit do what He wants to do with us. Let us bear a lot of fruit for the kingdom of God. Today could be that day our lives get snuffed out. Or King Jesus come for us. Let's finish this race strong. Especially when it seems like, are you kidding me? I've got my hamstring pulled and I'm exhausted. And I know there's only half a mile left of this marathon, but I'd rather just be done. No, let's tap into the power of the Holy Spirit to finish this thing strongly. So you guys can do it. Let the Holy Spirit do it. Keep short accounts with the Lord. Confess sin as it comes up. We're all sinful. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. If anyone is watching and you think you're not worthy, the Lord's not going to help you. He's not going to listen to you. You believe on him, you confess your sin unto him. If you're even struggling with believing, get a scripture out. Read from John to Revelation 22 and then try that again. Uh, the Holy Spirit will draw near to you. You continue to confess sin, continue to, you know, within your conscience what's right and wrong. Steer away from the wrong, strive for the right, and the Holy Spirit will meet you and then he'll change you. He'll give you the gift of God in you. That's the, that's the mystery revealed in the New Testament. God in you. It's possible. It's available. That's why the Lord hasn't come to remove us yet. He wants everyone to come and none to perish, although most will perish. Don't let that be you. So I love you guys very much. Continue to walk circumspect. Submit to the Holy Spirit. Be useful for the works the Lord has provided for you. Pray for the body of Christ across the face of this earth being persecuted. We go home soon. And that's great news. Thank you for watching. God bless you.